Hello and welcome back to another video. This is going to be a super quick video. We're just going to show two things. The first thing is how to export in FL Studio just to make sure that your export settings are all good. And the second thing is going to be talking about why sometimes when you export from FL Studio, if you then listen back on your computer, it sounds completely different to how it sounded in FL Studio. There's lots of people who their mix sounds awesome inside FL Studio, they export it and then they listen on their computer and it actually sounds really bad. The low end is terrible. The high end sounds really like sharp, but not not clear and defined. This happened to us when we started making music and there are a few things you can do to fix this. So let's just get straight into it. So starting with the first part of this video, how to export your song or your mix or your master in FL Studio. It will change depending on where you want to distribute your song. If you want to put it on a CD, your export settings might be a little bit different to if you want to put it onto Spotify. I've left some links in the description giving some good advice about what sort of settings to use for specific streaming sites, but just generally this should get you a good export from FL Studio. So the first thing you want to do is press control and highlight the length of your song just by left clicking and dragging. So this is just a really short audio demo for the sake of this tutorial, but it's five bars long. Then what you want to do is go up to file. You want to go to export and then just choose wave file for now. Give it whatever file name you want to give it. I'm just gonna call it export one. And then this uh, rendering dialog box pops up. So it'll tell you the name that it'll be exported to. And we'll just sort of go through this start to finish. So basically the first thing is mode, song selection or pattern. We want to export the whole song. So just make sure that's on song. It will give you a little bit of information under here, how many bars it is, how long it is. Usually if the total time, if that is like 20 minutes long or something, it's a good indication that you've probably selected the wrong amount of space, something like that. It'll also tell you how much space it's gonna take up on your computer. Then there's this tail option here, and this is pretty important. So I'll uh, flash up a little picture here showing what this does, but basically this chooses whether it cuts the audio exactly where you've t told it to cut, whether it leaves the remainder and just sort of like fades it out, say there's a reverb, it will keep on exporting until the reverb dies away to a certain value that's very, very small or it will wrap the remainder. So sometimes if you're exporting a, 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 like a beat loop or something, it actually starts at the end and wraps the decaying tail at the start so that you can loop things uh, forever. And that's not what you'd want for a song. Usually we would choose cut remainder if we were mastering. Sometimes you can do leave remainder if you're mixing because you might wanna just export all those reverb tails off and let a mastering engineer or, or yourself fade it away manually in mastering. But for now I'm gonna keep it to cut remainder because that's what I use nine times out of 10 because I like to choose precisely where it finishes. This section here lets you choose what format. Now we already chose WAV file when we went to the uh, file menu, but you could still choose an MP3 or a different sort of file. Now WAV file is gonna give you the best sound quality. It's what's recommended 99 times out of 100, but it does depend what uh, streaming site you're gonna put on, put it on or whether you're putting it onto an MP3 player or whatever, but WAV file is what we do. The WAV bit depth, if you're gonna put it onto a CD, you'll wanna have this as 16 bit but 24-bit is uh, widely accepted across um, sort of all streaming sites and most, uh, most mediums. But again, you should maybe check the links in the description and see what's gonna fit best for you. 24-bit and 32-bit are gonna give you a really high quality for sort of archiving your files and uh, a really high quality mix down. Even if you want to reduce the bit depth later, you can keep it high for now. All of these options down here will be grayed out in certain settings. So if I open up MP3, you can see that the wave bit depth has grayed itself out because it just doesn't mean anything. You can actually still change it, which is a bit strange, but it doesn't mean anything in this case. Um, so if an option's grayed out, you just don't even need to worry about it. Now we're on to quality. Now for this, you want to put it pretty much as high as possible. The only reason you'd want to go lower is if your computer is not really very good and it would take you a very, very long time to export and that was a problem. So if you had it on six point, it's going to export an awful lot quicker than 512 uh, point, but anything above 64 is going to be awesome. 512 is probably overkill, but we just try to make sure we get as much uh, quality there as possible. You want to make sure that both of these options here are checked. This dithering option only lights up if you're on 16-bit, depending on whether you want a dithered 16-bit output or not. But usually at the end of our mastering chain, whether we're using Ozone or we're using a Slate Digital Limiter, it will do the dithering for us in that process and we control the dithering there. So we tend to leave this dithering unchecked because it's not important for our specific uses. 
but if you weren't and you were doing 16-bit you might want to dither it just to make sure that it's all going to be okay. Just a note, some of these options might be hidden to you. You'll have to press these little down keys to make sure that you get all the options available. In this tab down here, the three most important things are trim PDC delay to make sure that the plugin delay compensation is working and everything stays in time. Uh, it can add a little bit of time just before your song or remove a tiny little bit, but it's only going to be a, a fraction of a second. The next one is enable master effects. You'll want to make sure all of your master effects are on unless your mastering engineer has told you to turn them all off and you'll want to have enable insert effects so that all of your delays, reverbs, EQ, compression is all working. At this point you have two options, you can choose background rendering or start. Start will start the render and you'll get to see the progress up here and then the start button will change to an abort button in case you want to uh, cancel what you're doing. If you choose background rendering you could close FL Studio and go and do something else on your computer or go on the internet or something like that whilst it's rendering. It frees up the computer but it's going to take a little bit longer to render because it's not using all of your computer's resources. So I'm going to go and press start and you'll see the progress bar moving. Just like that. And then often I'll open up a file explorer and I'll drag the file back in just to make sure that it's the right length and that nothing's clipped or distorted or anything like that. Just to quickly show you what I meant about the dithering settings, in Slate FGX, which is one of the limiters we use, it has a dithering option. And then I just go into the settings and I'll choose the resolution and the, and the output settings and stuff like that inside this so that I don't have to worry about FL Studio handling those, I have full control over them. So that's the first part of this video done. Now we're going to look at why your audio sometimes sounds bad outside of FL Studio after you've exported it. So what's this all about? Well basically there are thousands and thousands of people online and myself who when we started with FL Studio we exported something, it sounded great inside FL Studio but then we played it back on our computer either on like Windows Music Player or like Groove Music or something like that, just the inbuilt media player on the computer and it just sounded awful, like the bass was non-existent, the high end was really like fatiguing and brittle but it didn't sound clear and everything just sounded phasey and terrible and it causes people to just stress out, there's huge forums online talking about ways to fix it and all the problems but what I found from our own experience and looking online is that 99% of the time it's the fault of your computer's inbuilt audio processing and the media player enhancements that you're using. Even after being told that I was convinced it was something else and it was some skill I had or didn't have that was causing the problem and I kept looking for fixes in the mix or in, in mastering to try and fix what was going on but in reality it was actually just the audio settings on the player. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll just open up Groove Music and I happen to have the settings open but somewhere on here there'll be a settings option, in this case it's down here, and there might be something like an equalizer, and the equalizer might have some sort of cut or some sort of boost or something like that and might be messing with it. And the same thing's true whether you have Windows Media Player, Beats Media Player or something, they've all got enhancements or stereo widening. Usually these are turned on by default, so you just want to make sure that all of those are turned off, but then sometimes the computer just doesn't sound good. Like on my laptop where we started making music, it sounded great in FL Studio, but we never had an audio interface. Face. So we were using the ASIO for all um, settings inside FL Studio, but then when we left and we were listening to the music on Windows Media Player, it was using the Realtek audio drivers, and no matter what I did and no matter how many times I updated them or reinstalled them, these Realtek drivers always sounded rubbish, and I was so worried that that would be what it would sound like for everyone else, but then when I took that song and put it on my phone and listened in headphones, it sounded great. Or if I listened in the car, it sounded absolutely amazing. And if I plugged an audio interface into the laptop and bypassed its own settings and its own audio management uh, settings, it sounded awesome again. Basically the take home is that don't be too worried about your own skills if this is happening. It's probably not your fault. If you click export and you follow these sorts of settings and then your song ends up sounding like complete garbage, it's probably not because uh, you are mixing something wrong in FL Studio. If it sounds very different inside FL Studio and outside, it's probably a fault in your hardware or software on the computer you're using. I'll leave some links in the description that hopefully you can give some sorts of very specific fixes or maybe links to where you could get new drivers or something like that. But uh, try not to worry about it being your own skills. It's likely just a technical problem and that's what I see 
been the resolution in most of these forums. Usually it's just a technical problem and it's not your own skills. So hopefully this video has been helpful. I do have a video showing how to export all the stems in your project with or without effects if you were going to send it to like a mixing or a mastering engineer. So I'll link that video just here in a moment. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.